All right, everybody. Welcome back <clears throat> to Flomington Famous. We've got a good one for you tonight. We're going to continue on the same type of theme about what we should do since we are facing a uh, economic collapse, a coll collapse of the food chain, and so on and so forth. You can even apply this to if you are have some type of other life-changing event like uh, a hurricane in your area, a tornado if you're in the Midwest, um, <clears throat> things that can happen locally to your area that could affect you heavily for several days, several weeks, or seven months, several months. <clears throat> Matter of fact, when I lived in Maine, I was stationed there for three years. As soon as I got there, they had the worst ice storm that they had had in probably a hundred years. And uh, some people were that were without power for about a month to six weeks in the dead of winter. This was in December in Maine. It was freezing cold, below, uh, below zero temperatures. And uh, for them, that was an event. So, um, better have been prepared for. Most of the people that live in rural Maine already live with an off-grid mindset. There's a lot of people that are not tied to the to the grid, and they live in a, a rural lifestyle. So we've got Miss Michelle here beside me today, and she's on the keyboard, and she's going to be talking to you over chat. Hey, Arthur. Welcome back. Hey, Carolyn. Glad to have you. Good to see you, too. We got another one popping in. Several things I want to talk to you guys tonight. And uh, like I just said, as you're joining, is uh, I want to talk about some of the things you need to prepare for. That light's kind of whiting you out. Right now, if I turn that there. off, is that better? Much better. It is much better. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought it would look better in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> Let's put that over here. Maybe if I can push it this way. It's hot, y'all. Yeah. it's uh, And we're still on preheat down here in South Alabama. Yeah. It's still warming up. It was 89 degrees air temperature a while ago with 102 heat index. I was like, that's just stupid. I went out to the garage uh, before I came on and to be with you guys. And I was just unloading a few boards off the back of the truck and put them in the garage at 89 degrees. And I was just drenched in sweat. It's ridiculous. Yeah, better. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look too dark on, on mm -mm. camera, but no. it looks dark in the room. If you were just walking by in the room, <clears throat> it, would, it would appear dark. <clears throat> so give a little quick garden update while we're waiting on people to pop in here. I haven't really been out to the garden to look around inside the fence of the mm -hmm. garden in about two days. But I did look over the fence a while ago and our butter beans that we planted, this is almost three weeks now, our butter beans have runners on them. Oh, wow. Like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be long that uh, they're going to be kicking off and producing. Our corn we planted three weeks ago is now a little over knee high. Mm -hmm. I've got to get out there this weekend and uh, put some nitrogen fertilized to it and bed those things up. They're going to be taken off real soon. Mm -hmm. And our peas, our um, our pink eye purple hole peas that we have in the garden, they're uh, they're putting on a lot of growth. We dug potatoes last week, and I know you guys haven't seen that video yet, but we had a pretty good harvest of purple potatoes. They were fingerling potatoes. Did you do a video on that? I did. I got to get it to you so you can add it. Say I need that there. footage. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I owe her a couple of yeah a couple of footages so that she can get some videos out. But um, just a little five by ten bed. Now we have it's not a raised bed garden. It's boxes on top of the ground. We actually plant in ground. We don't plant in raised boxes where we have two beds that are raised beds. But most of our beds are in ground. They're just framed out. But our our bed size is five foot by ten foot. Mm -hmm. And we had had some purple potatoes that kind of grew in those garden beds, among other vegetables. And uh, 
we couldn't find any seed potatoes for the purple potatoes this year. We didn't know what to do. <clears throat> so we went out and uh, dug up the potatoes that we saw growing in between the other vegetables. And, and we had enough to uh, fill the entire bed with seed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And just out of that accidental harvest, we probably have 30 pounds of potatoes that we harvested this year. That's uh, that's generally more potatoes than we typically eat of the purple variety. Did you turn the air conditioner down? I did. Okay. Do you want to put the fan on? Blow a little air on you? All right, guys. Um, let's go ahead and get on into it. We've got it. We've been on live on air about five minutes now. Give you a little garden update. But uh, the things I want to talk to you about is some of the things you need to consider if we do happen to face a economic collapse or life changing event. Um, one of the things I want you guys to think about is paying off your mortgage if you don't already own your home. We have a 15 year on our property. We've been here for going on six years now and we've been paying a little ahead of time, but just like every day I just have this urge that I really need to pay this house off and lock it down to make sure that it's ours. Because, you know, if we do go into a uh, economic collapse and we lose our jobs, some people are still going to want to want their money and they're going to be coming after. But we don't want to foreclose on the house. We want to lock down the, the property that uh, that we currently have. We like it here. Uh, we're settled. We feel like this is going to be our forever home. And Maya sitting in the chair right over there is actually in the process of buying the little house right next door to us. Little thousand square foot house on one acre. She's going to be in living in the house and we're going to be um, putting plants on property. We're going to be expanding mm -hmm. our orchard yep. over to there. Look for lots of videos of that. Yeah. We're going to have some interesting stuff going in over there. Yeah. Cause some, we're going to remodel the house and I'm going to go in like, you know, I'm talking about fruit trees. Oh, I'm sorry, not remodeling the house. <laughs> y'all get to see all my screw ups and my follies and yeah. So Flamington famous mm -hmm. house remodel. That's it. It'll yeah. be fun. I told us that we have a sawmill, so we should be able to cut our own accent wall out of a bunch mm -hmm. of live boards. Yeah. We have a popular little uh, Mexican restaurant in town and they, they did their entire restaurant in pallet boards, mm -hmm. their wall. Well, they painted them in different colors, you know, like there's a gray strip and, um, a natural strip and then a dark brown, almost black strip. And it looks really cool. So, yeah, but I am not a fan of pallet projects. I really don't like them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a big fan of their wall. Now, if they'd have had just straight sawmill timber and they put on there, I'd probably like it a little bit more. Yeah. A little family village. <laughs> um, it, it feels like it here because, uh, our neighbors that live on the other side of us <laughs> are my cousins. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody knows anybody in this area or, if, uh, you know, some people that are joining us are from uh, Flomaton or a small town, but everyone knows everyone here. Yeah. And it's so, a well-connected community. Yeah. It's one big family. And I think to me, I was thinking about this the other day, when you say Flomaton famous, it's a nod to living in a small town because everybody knows everybody and everybody is famous for a little bit of something mm -hmm. like across the street. We've got Johnny. Johnny is now filming. Uh, Bam. Nine. He was on the moonshiner show and he is famous for being a moonshiner and on his way to be a little bit more well-known as a moonshiner. But I grew up with Shawnee. John played football with him and uh, he's one year older than me and he lives just across the field about two miles from here. Mm hmm Man, um, that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then on the other side of my next door neighbors that are my cousins is uh, Jeremy and Brooke. Mm -hmm. Brooke knew, knowing them, Jeremy and I played football together. He's one year younger than me. He's <laughs> a lawyer in our area. Mm-hmm. And he owns a lot of the property that is yeah. right here among us because that's where. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Are you on your. No. Okay. okay, they were back. But <laughs> Jeremy is living on the property that his grandfather owned, which was a dairy. And I remember as a kid coming over, my grandfather 
and putting money in a milk jar, swapping out the gallon jar and getting a new gallon of milk out of the refrigerator That's they had funny. at the dairy. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the dairy is now a little barber shop. Jeremy's wife, Brooke, mm -hmm. now runs a little barber shop out of that little dairy house in their backyard. And then ne next to him is his dad. And mm -hmm. he was our town, sh our uh, county sheriff. Yeah. Like I said, small town. Small town. Everybody's connected. Mm -hmm. And if you go all the way to the opposite end of the road, the Johnsons down there, um, he, uh, the guy that lives there was first cousins with my father. And then his daughter lives next mm -hmm. to him. So we're all connected. We're all community here. Uh, we're all tight knit family. <clears throat> Hey, Carolyn, you're going to have a uh, a family compound around your new place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd be praying for you guys for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love small towns. There's nothing else. I've been around this world twice, been in the Navy 20 years. And uh, this is, I have to say, this is a very unique yeah. situation sure. that we have. I thought everybody was just like Flamington no. whenever I got out <laughs> in the world, and it's not. And Pensacola is so close. And I grew up in Pensacola, and I come out here, and I was like, wow, I love it out here. It's so tiny, and y'all got four red lights. Man, that's, and that's awesome. <laughs> We're actually just a pass-through from all the people from Florida. Yeah, and in Pensacola, you got like four red lights on one road. Actually, you have yeah. one main road that's like six different names yeah typical big city crestview mm -hmm. hey tay tay from crestview look at that mm -hmm. well welcome i think you've been here before yeah, i've been chatting with her i asked her where she was from she said oh, she okay. was close Husband's you just keep talking Eglin. baby he's in the air force <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome i actually work at nas pensacola and cybersecurity down there that's my the, my full-time job that's how i get paid yeah so i commute every day to pensacola out the navy base and get to watch the blue angels fly Man, that's got to be tough, huh? Yes, yeah, aggravating sometimes. He actually goes to work just so he can get like away from cover. Yeah, work here that I have on this <laughs> really long honey-do list. Yeah. All right, so paying off your mortgage. That's one of the things I got. I want you guys to really think about doing. We want to lock down where we are here. We love it, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to stay here. Yeah. We are in a hurry. Um, mm -hmm. Within a year, I've really progressed my income here and i think we're going to focus our money right. on paying down paying off debt and paying off our mortgage um right now we're focused on buying the little house next door for maya mm -hmm. so that her uh, her little income can pay for that so mm -hmm. that won't be really affecting our income very much we're going to subsidize right. And you get all that property. Yeah i get a whole acre to expand the fig orchard. Yeah i'm excited for that. Yeah a son's wife, four kids, wow, daughter-in-law's father, maybe in the same place. It'll be minutes for my brother and his wife and my sister. That sounds great. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Y'all can do that. That's awesome, especially in times like the way they are right now. Everybody needs to be able to rely on family and close friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, um, I didn't I didn't really grow up with my family all on one road like that but my mom and dad grew up across the street from each other mm -hmm. one and my dad was in alabama and my mom was in florida and they lived on state line road mm -hmm. and uh arthur says debt free is the only way to be it is no stress that's yep, for sure for sure um, the only thing we owe on is the truck the house mm -hmm. and two credit cards but the credit cards are relatively small right we could pay them off pretty quick all right another thing to to consider if we have an economic collapse that you guys should really be thinking about is do you have enough land to farm, raise your own vegetables and maybe even raise your own livestock on? Mm -hmm. We are looking to add not just the one little one acre next door, but one or two acres behind I'm us. I'm hoping two acres. We'll I'm, see. We'll yeah, see if Jeremy. Two acres. If, Shh, don't say the name. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> don't say the name. We'll see if we graciously mm -hmm. are. Are allowed to acquire some property right. behind us that's right <laughs> but the main reason we want that property is so that we can plant in row gardens so that we can plant large amounts mm -hmm. of corn potatoes yeah peas butter beans that's right uh staple crops <laughs> that's another thing that was on my list it was a little further down we'll go ahead and mention that that staple crops are something you need to be doing and uh preparing to make sure that you have food on your property 
so that you can eat no matter what, <clears throat> whether you lose refrigeration or someone comes and invades your house, worst case scenario, that you have right. crops <laughs> that will continue to produce. Hey, Nancy. <clears throat> so, um, me too, Carolyn. Make sure that you've got enough property that you can at least you can um, mm -hmm. you can grow your food on. That's I, so important. The important thing would be to to grow all your food. Mm -hmm. It's not possible for for most of Americans. Most of Americans live inner city, right? And they have very little land that they can utilize to grow food on. Mm -hmm. But there are vacant lots in cities. And you could plant a little gorilla garden in little uh, non-disclosed locations. You can go to those empty lots, right. stomp out a spot, stick mm -hmm. a shovel in the ground, plant some sweet potatoes. Let those potato vines grow. Nobody will ever know that those crops are in the ground. Unless someone in the city, someone will come along, though. <laughs> a lot of people, it's not like the country, baby. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people can't identify a sweet potato vine growing That's across true. the ground. That's true. That's true. Not in the city. <laughs> right. Especially if it's covered all around in weeds and tall grasses. When I met Randall, we would go places like we were hiking the Appalachian Trail and he would be pointing at everything he saw out there. You can eat that. You can eat that. You can eat that. You can eat that. I'm like, man, this is awesome. I, yeah. I, yeah. I don't even know what poison ivy looks like. I'm, I'm in trouble. Yeah, you go hiking. Mm -hmm. You better know what poison ivy looks like. That is not the toilet paper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a statistic one time that said that on average, only, uh, Everybody can only identify seven trees oh, at one time. Hidden Oats. Is hey, Hidden Oats. Glad uh -huh. to have you. Chip or Nicole or both. or, But we're glad to have you here tonight. Mm -hmm. Hidden mm -hmm. Oats is already ahead of the game. They got all the property they need. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their mortgage situation is, but one of the things I talked about was uh, have a paid off mortgage for right. fa facing economic hard times. Mm -hmm. At least you would own your house. Nobody's going to kick you off your property and the bill collector is not going to come knocking on your door or wanting to repossess your land. Take hey, Chip. <laughs> Glad to have you, brother. That's fine. Recently blessed and given access to several acres. Oh, that's wonderful, Arthur. Yeah. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely great. I grow my own fruits and vegetables and eggs and chicken and meat here, but we want at least 15 acres at our new place. We want cows, pigs, lambs. Yeah, you want a full on homestead. That's for sure. That's mm -hmm. good. If you can, if you can do that and you can achieve that, right? Um, you're living the dream. Being self sustainable is very important. It's very securing, mm -hmm. very gratifying. Michelle ate a piece of fruit and she discovered this secret fruit oh. had a pit <laughs> in it from the market. Yeah. We won't say what the fruit is, but she said, Will this grow? And I said, Yeah, it will. <laughs> We looked it up later. It's been roasted, so it probably won't grow. Oh, I hope it will. But she was excited to go outside and poke that seed into the mm -hmm. ground and, and check it in a couple of weeks and see mm -hmm. if it starts coming up. And uh, I think it was that was like a little key moment for you to like right. the, the satisfaction of I'm going to take this seed out of my mouth mm -hmm. and we're going to grow a fruit tree with it. Yeah. Yeah. You just dropped off two sheep to the processor. That's great. Congratulations. We're actually going, uh, we're buying a quarter of a cow. We've, yep. We're securing some beef for our, our ourselves, and we're going to be going over to Hidden Oaks Homestead to the processor, Oaks Meat Processing. Yeah, not Hidden Oaks Homestead. Hidden Oaks actually is about a <laughs> mile or two from that processor. It's called Oaks Process, the Oak. Oaks, and yeah. I think it's in Pace. Yeah, they have it's a Pace in. address. Mm -hmm. But it's it's where you know the little convenience store where Hidden Oaks lives. Oh, it's right it's down right, the road. Yeah, it's right behind their yeah. little convenience store. Can't can't give their location away. Top secret. You can't get to them anyway. Mm -hmm. Those guys no, are very. They're locked down. Yeah. Yeah, man. I wish we were <laughs> locked down. Hey, we're going to be. And that's yeah. another thing that hit that uh, made my list is um, if we do face an economic collapse, if things get really tough, really tight. Um, Electric fence. We're going. We're putting fencing across the front of our property. We have all to the way anyway. We're going to get a live livestock guardian dog, right? From Chip. Yeah. <laughs> Chip and Nicole. Don't forget Nicole. Yeah. If you don't know who they are, if you've never uh, watched them, go check them out. 
not right now. Stay with us, guys. Yeah. But check them out a little bit later. <laughs> just write them down. They got a uh, they got a great channel. Those guys yeah. are doing wonderful over there. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, fence your property. You want to keep people off your property mm -hmm. in hard times. Um, we do live out here in the country. There's a total of 10 people on our entire one mile road. Right. But our road is like a cut through road. Mm -hmm. So my fear is that we're going to have all these, our orchard is right off the road and you can drive by and see apples hanging and pears and plums. And yeah. somebody might be like, Hmm, I think I'm hungry. I want some fruit. So not that I'm against feeding the needy or anything like that. Cause we do have a food pantry that we give food to and whatnot. But anyways, long story short, I want to put a fence up so we can, you know, at least we can protect our food. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If we got food to give away, let us do it. With a big guardian dog. But one of the one of the things I was about to say is there's a new house just kind of behind us a little, just mm -hmm. right there. Like yeah. You can walk right to it in, in two, three minutes. And someone was in their garage at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And here we are in the middle of nowhere. He's got security cameras. And, and uh, we have security cameras. We do. But um, he stepped up his security mm -hmm. features a little bit. He bought, he put in two security lights to light his driveway mm -hmm. and around his back door. So, And I think he's put in additional cameras. So we want a fence and a couple of livestock dogs. Yeah. And then we're going to put um, electric fencing around the top of our fence mm -hmm. and around the bottom. It would be great to have a non-scalable fence, but I don't think that's going to be in the budget. Mm -hmm. to keep people from climbing over. Um, but just a, a typical little fence will deter people from easily just walking onto your property. So um, pay off your mortgage. Make sure you've got more, you've got land <clears throat> to grow your uh, crops on and possibly even pasture a couple of animals on. That was another thing that had made the list. Have yourself some type of an animal that will reproduce that you can harvest for meat. Because we're on such a small place here, we don't have the capability of raising out large mm -hmm. animals like cows. Not right now. Yeah, not right now. But we can raise meat chickens. Mm -hmm. We can raise turkeys. Mm -hmm. So that's what we chose to do. Is this year, we got away from the Cornish Cross, and we have now went to the new... Uh, the Breeze. Or br the breast, breast the breast, breast. Or yeah, the, the, new, the bird that is now all the rage among homesteaders. Mm -hmm. Everybody's raging about these birds. We've not harvested any of ours yet, but uh, it's supposed to be like the Wagyu beef of the chicken. It's supposed to be the only chicken that has fat marbling in the meat. So we're kind of excited. It's supposed to be the number one best tasting chicken mm -hmm. that you can that you can have, and in the country of france these go for about a hundred dollars a bird at a restaurant right so uh, we're excited mm -hmm. the good thing is is uh the breast is a reproducible bird we've got roosters we've got hens they mate they lay eggs i heard someone the other night talk about their routine they hatch 10 eggs mm -hmm. they harvest 10 chickens and they keep that rotation and that way they're not out there slaughtering 20 and 30 birds at one time. But at the same time, um, they are, they're keeping a steady supply of breed stock on hand and uh, they got eggs to eat and they got mm -hmm. chickens to eat. That's a good idea. What Arthur just said that he said he's got a friend that lives on a similar road and those that um, live there got together and decided that if things get too bad, they'll just down some trees and block the road. I love that idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. And yeah. we have got a big tree down there where the Johnsons yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we've got a dirt th dirt dirt road that's There's cut a dirt through. Cut through. Yeah. But that's nothing to throw yeah, some trees some across trees. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to completely isolate ourselves in. But there's just big fields though. Is our I mean they. If we put trees down, people could come across the fields, but yeah. it would deter cars. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It would deter. I appreciate you throwing that out there, author, that we'll keep that in the back of our mind. If uh, Max, Mad Max scenario <laughs> hits, that's one of the tools that we can do. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I want a Mad Max camper anyway. <laughs> now, one of the other uh, things that we've decided to raise as a livestock animal that will reproduce is mm -hmm. heritage breed turkeys mm -hmm. we've got the midget whites 
because they're supposed to be the best tasting of the turkeys. Right. Uh, they're smaller than, you know, the rooster, the uh, gobblers, they get up to 18 to 20 pounds. They're kind of relatively small for a turkey. Mm -hmm. And then we've got just the regular heritage whites. They, mm -hmm. they get a little larger, but we can grind that meat and then use that for turkey burger, which is what we typically do yeah. with a lot of our turkeys is we grind. Tacos. Yeah, we just had some tacos tonight. Spaghetti. Nope, we had enchiladas. Enchiladas. That's Where were right. you at? I was on last night. Last <laughs> night was taco night. Last night was taco night. <laughs> <laughs> we love Mexican around here. Yeah, but we grind a lot of our turkey meat to use as a hamburger. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, reproducible animals for a sustaining crop, a sustaining meat, meat source. Um, now, one other thing that is like one of your basic needs <laughs> other than shelter is a water source. We bought this property and had a water well on board. Our house is not tied to the uh, to the water well, but we use our water well to irrigate our pecan tree orchard and our garden and our fruit tree orchard. We also use we ran we dug trenches and, and ran uh, water pipes out to our chicken pen so that we have water where our chickens are at. So we feed our livestock off our well water and we water our, our fruits and vegetables. Mm. We have yet to even take a sip of that water. No. I didn't want to because we have fields around here and I didn't know what type of uh, herbicides, pesticides mm. might be uh, contaminated that well. So we went to our county EPA and we requested a water test kit. Right. Michelle did that the other day to Bruton, Alabama, right? No, I got it in Atmore. You got it at Atmore mm -hmm. at, at the environmental agency there mm -hmm. and uh they give you a little health department a little canister and inside that canister is a uh, mm -hmm. you take a water sample you fill out the label according to the instructions and you put postage on it and then you mail that off and they're going to analyze that for us for free so we're going to see what our water um, mineral content any kind of contaminants that's present but so we'll know I also want to do rainwater and kind of. Um, We've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. So. Yeah, we have a Berkey water mm -hmm. water filter. And you can't be a homesteader without having a Berkey. It's right. just like rule number one. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to have a, a, a water filtration. And everybody likes the Berkey. And uh, we have in the past have filtered our rainwater into the Berkey. And we've bottled that up into five gallon water mm -hmm. jugs and we keep that in our little water dispenser in the house mm -hmm. and for a long time that's how we did it and then i just got tired of filtering water and then we just go and uh to our walmart to the osmos reverse osmosis water filter and then we and the last it. time i went they didn't have it for a week they and didn't it have was it. like what they don't so have the water filter they thing. didn't have the water available you flip the switch and there was no water so my thought was okay this is gonna happen again and what if this happens and you you know i can't rely on that i can't keep going to walmart and filling up my containers and that's right so i want to also collect the rainwater again so when we get our well tested we'll have a source of water here now that it's a well there's got to be a way to get that well water up some mm -hmm. people will use a pitcher pump like an, an old school pitcher pump mm -hmm. out in the yard. And I thought about doing that and paying $50 for a manual pump. Mm -hmm. And then we could pump, hand pump our water out of the well. Yeah. Um, another thing that, uh, that made the list to consider would be solar power. If you generated enough solar power and you had a large enough converter, our pump is 220 uh, volts. And then you could run a pump off of that enough to get water out. Mm -hmm. So um, some type of a, a way, an electrical source to pump that water out of the ground would be ideal. But if that goes down, we need to have a, a tertiary. Or if we could do it by hand and use that extra, you know, solar power to use for freezers and stuff, refrigerators. Then That's right. AC, heat, you know. Yep. Um, so outside of water, that leads us on to our next thing is canning supplies. Make sure that you've got enough canning supplies in case you lose your freezers. You've got to be in a hurry mm -hmm. to hurry up and start canning yeah. all the meat and vegetables that's in your freezer. So do you have enough jars in your stockpile that you can pull that out? 
and put everything into cans and start a, a big canning event. I know we don't. We only we have a few hundred mason jars. We probably have 150 to 200 What's a DC lids. Pump? Uh, 12 volts. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's something to think about. Yeah, that is. Appreciate mm -hmm. you throwing that out there, Arthur. Arthur's being very helpful. Tonight. I know. <laughs> glad to have uh, glad to have these comments rolling. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, let's share some some knowledge with them. Um. We're talking about solar power and uh, canning supplies. That's where we were at. We've got to step up our canning supplies. We ordered the uh, Harvest Guard reusable canning mm -hmm. lids. That's one thing. And Michelle's mother's husband, My mother, <laughs> yeah, your stepdad, his mother, right, passed away two years ago. And mm -hmm. we were canning. Tons of boxes, of canning jars, Tons. but they're not the big quart size one. They're the uh, the pints. I think, yeah, I think they're the the little pint jelly well, they're jars. They're the middle, and, and then the little jelly jars. Yeah, they're only those two. Yeah, and we could do a little bit with that, mm -hmm. but we prefer to do everything in, in quart size jars. Quart size would be more of a meal size for us, right? So that's one of the things we need to look at is stepping up our ability to can. Mm -hmm. Um, we, because we're getting an, a quarter of a cow next month, we're going to be looking at buying another freezer. So that would be a third freezer space for us. The, yeah, that would be three deep freezers. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're getting a quarter of a cow. So we're going to have to get another deep freezer. Yeah. So <laughs> between the chickens that we've harvested and the vegetables that we grow and put in the freezers, we're going to have to have a third freezer to uh, store that meat in. And we have a generator, uh, a, a pretty powerful generator that whenever our next door neighbors moved, they sold it to us on a really good deal. Um, I've got a brand new carburetor on it. We've got to pull it out of storage now that we're right here at hurricane season and make sure that it cranks up this year. It should. I've drained yeah, the gas yeah, out of it. Yeah, we need to go get it like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yesterday. But we had a hurricane hit two or three years ago and I pulled the thing out and it would not crank. It had, a, it had a gummed up car. Mm -hmm. So an alternate power source. Needless to, to your, say, I was not happy. Yeah. We got <laughs> bailed out of that one. Step, yeah. Stepdad to the rescue. Well, our neighbor too is an electrician. So he wired it up for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Another thing to think about is, um, firearms everybody mentions make sure that you've got a firearm uh, not only to protect yourself not only to hunt with that's um, a very sensitive subject right now it is and um i frankly i don't care mm -hmm. you know we have a second amendment for a reason that's right. so that we as a uh well-armed militia could defend ourselves in mm -hmm. our country mm -hmm. and uh, those people who want to put restrictions on firearms i think restrictions would be one one talking point but people who want to take away the rights. Once you go down the, the wormhole of, of taking away a firearm, right. you just opened yourself up to taking away all the firearms. Yeah. And then it, it's nothing for people to march on our shores. Mm -hmm. But um, I know I heard the statistic one time say that in the state of Michigan alone, there were 50,000 hunting permits issued. That tells you about how many people are actively hunting, right? How many arms there are. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's kind of an unnerving whenever you're some big country and you say, let's go invade America. Oh, but every, every household has a firearm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it'd be difficult for them. So, so. Um, now bullets, the cheapest firearm that you could possibly own would be a 22 rifle. And I think even growing up as a kid, I had a 22 rifle. I went everywhere with that thing. I shot. Is that the gun that we saw on TV that I was like, honey, what kind of gun is that? Yeah, that's the little 22. They don't get one of those. the uh, rounds cost about eight cents a round. So it's really cheap to buy the ammunition. It used to be a lot cheaper in the past, mm -hmm. less than a penny a round. But um, the price went significantly way up. But um, 22 rifles, one of the things we're going to be adding. Good. Mm -hmm. 
So um, now if you want to step it up, you can go on up to the 223 and maybe a 12 gauge shotgun. And if you're afraid of the recoil, get a 20 gauge shotgun. They don't kick as much. Shotgun shells are going to cost you about 30 cents a round. Um, nine millimeter, nine millimeter, nine millimeters also cost about uh, 30 cents a round. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and, and get yourself a few bullets <laughs> to uh, and defend yourself with. Uh, predators in case you have to do any hunting or anything mm -hmm. like that. A, firearms have a big use. Um, it's a big, it's a big resource to have. Mm -hmm. And another thing that you consider as a backup to that would be a bow and arrow set. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you could always reuse your arrows. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing we're going to be getting bow and arrows again. One of those like, um, you want a crossbow? Yeah. Like Daryl. Yeah. Daryl on the walking <laughs> dead. So you can just like pull it back and pow! Yeah, I want one of those. <laughs> yeah, biggest mistake would be to invade via the Gulf. Yeah, they'd probably come in through California. Although you'd be surprised at how many conservatives. Northern and, California. And firearm mm -hmm. owners there are in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a large Republican base there. Large conservators, a lot of pro in Second Northern Amendment. Northern California. <laughs> but it's the cities who, yeah. uh, who dictate the policy. That's right. Yeah, the cities are the one that makes Californians famous. Everyone needs to know how to use their PPUs. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, a spinoff of hunting, acquiring wild game, mm -hmm. that won't last long. If everybody goes out in the wood and they start hunting wild game, the wild game's going to become extinct real That's quick right. in your immediate mm -hmm. area. Yeah. So it's not a reliable source, but if you, uh, if you have an isolated incident, grid goes down, you need some immediate, immediate food. You can take your firearm. You can go acquire some uh, some wildlife. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't look at that and say, we're going to do this for the next 10 years and go out and hunt no. and hunt deer. Mm -mm. It's going to be wiped out really quick. Um, another thing to consider would be just fishing tackle. Make sure that you have a rod and reel, maybe even a little uh, canoe or a boat or something. You mm -hmm. can get out in the water and go fishing. I remember as a kid, we'd go in. Love it and uh, catch bluegill and we'd catch a whole ice chest full mm -hmm. of them and uh if you even if you don't have a room to store a lot at least you can go fishing and uh, and harvest some meat for yourself so that was uh, that was real quick but another big one that you want to consider now if you've got property and if you've got a homestead bigger than just a couple of acres you should have a tractor mm -hmm. a tractor the proper farm implements so that you can plant row gardens and tenure crops. It would just be that much easier. Now, if you're on a smaller little area where you're planting a victory garden in your backyard, make sure you've got proper gardening tools that you can tend your, your uh, crops with, whether it be a hoe or a push uh, cultivator, push plow or something like that. But make sure that you've got uh, gardening, Im gardening implements and a tractor, tractor for larger larger uh, homesteads um well believe it or not that's it we made it through our list that was a <laughs> list of 10 things and we'll summarize that up real quick so paying off the mortgage buying land um having enough pasture land so if you don't have enough land to grow on mm -hmm. maybe acquire a little piece of land so that you can grow your crops on um secure your water have your water tested to make sure you know that it's potable and disease free and That's contaminant right. free. And then think about um, how you're going to get that water up out of the ground. If it's in a well. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe also, you know, save your rain, rain water. Yes, you know. absolutely. Go ahead and have a couple of 55 gallon barrels on standby mm -hmm. food grade. That's what we did. It's we great just to have a plan, start yeah. a plan. Um, if you guys don't mind, hit the thumbs up button for me. And that just triggers the algorithm on YouTube so that more people are able to see this. I greatly appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. And if you're new here, we invite you to subscribe and follow us along. We're going to try to do lives every Thursday night at 7 p.m. and bring new content to you. Cover current affairs. And, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just jump right in there and ask us. Um. Plant sustainable crops, potatoes, corn, beans, stuff that you can live off mm -hmm. of. We're not talking about planting salads here. Salads are nice. Dang it. Um, everybody can grow little herbs in the corner to season your food with. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 
but make sure that you secure the, the main crops that's mm -hmm. going to feed you. Uh, firearms, bow and arrow, plenty of ammunition. Uh, fence your property so that you can be, make it a little easier to defend yeah. and just keep people from easily walking onto your property and taking your food. Um, hot wire on that fence to keep out any kind of coyotes mm -hmm. or trespassers trying to trying to scale your fence. That's right. Garden tractor, garden implements, canning supplies, fishing tackle, and some type of an alternate soul, uh, alternate power supply, such as solar and a backup generator. Backup generators are wonderful if you know that you're only going to be without power for like maybe up to a week. You can uh, you can manage the gas to go in a generator to keep your uh, keep your refrigerators running and maybe a little window unit to keep yourself cool if you're in the summertime. Plant potatoes and vegetables you eat and fruits you eat. That's right. Don't go just plant beans if you don't eat beans. That's right. And don't plant potatoes if you don't eat potatoes. But mm -hmm. there, out of one week, write down what vegetables you ate. Mm -hmm. And whatever is reoccurring, those are the vegetables you need to be growing because those are the vegetables that you like and that you like to eat. Mm -hmm. For us, broccoli and green beans. Yeah. We don't eat very much sweet corn, maybe once a year, because Michelle's digestive tract don't agree with with sweet corn. Yeah. We don't grow sweet corn, but we do grow field corn that we can grind into flour, and then that's okay. We'll definitely keep some non-ethanol non -ethanol gas, gas for the generators, definitely. Yes. And make sure you got gas for a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, I've gummed up my brand new chainsaw before, and then after that, I was like, I'm just going to buy the one-gallon mm -hmm. pre-mixed stuff and i've never had a problem with it since um if you buy the two cycle oil it has a shelf you mix it it starts to break down and then one per, over one month um you still only have 80 percent of that oil that is good and 20 percent of that oil has already started to go bad after one month and start breaking down so mm -hmm. if you mix it up use it right away don't let it set if it's set for more than a month or two throw it out make a new batch of uh of oil for your chainsaw well great yep i enjoyed it um any questions let's let's talk about some stuff what are some ideas that you think people need to do to uh, better prepare for worst case scenario camera's going wild in and out of focus oh is it yeah you see <laughs> there we go okay uh, there we don't go back out of focus again mm -hmm. well it's getting dark outside so we're probably losing lights matter of fact we've got to go lock up chickens soon yeah mm -hmm. we let our chickens out to so we've already covered everything. Um, if y'all can think of some questions, just, you know, shoot us a question or two. And But otherwise, just look for us next week. We'll yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed these lives. We've This is maybe, what, the fourth one that we've done? Mm -hmm. Three in a row now or something like that. Yep, Kenny and, Chesney. Uh, I really enjoy doing the lives. <laughs> I like spending the time with, with an audience here. Yeah. The good group. All right, guys. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we appreciate the time. We appreciate you guys coming and spend some time with us. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.